My special guest is a consummate musician and the only woman ever to be a regular member of the Lawrence Welk Orchestra. Please welcome our fabulous cellist, Miss Charlotte Harris. I'm so glad you're here with us, Charlotte. Well, thank you so much, Mary Lou. I'm very happy to be here, too. Did this show bring back some memories for you? Oh, it brought back a lot of memories. This is the first time I was in Hawaii, so it was a particular thrill. And Rose picked such beautiful, colorful costumes. And another thing, it was so nice to have the audience participate in some of our numbers, too. My, my older daughter found out that we were going to be in Hawaii, so she flew in the day before, and she met us at the plane. Oh. It was such a thrill. Oh, how wonderful. Now, you're from the Chicago area. Did yeah. you come from a musical family? Uh, yes, I did. My, I lived in Maywood, Illinois, about 10 miles west of Chicago for, until I was 14. And then we moved to River Forest, Illinois. My dad was in the advertising business, and in 1933, he, uh, does, he originated the slide rule a calculator chart company. It uh, was based on the slide rule principle. And um, he also was a, uh, had a beautiful, beautiful baritone voice, and he played piano by ear. And one of those calculators I actually made of the Lawrence Welk Band many years ago. And I have one. Oh, you do? <laughs> How wonderful. And your mom? And my your... mother, my mother was a professional violinist. Uh, years before, she had had a very large music school with her twin sister who played the piano. And uh, my mother started each one of us when we were three years old on an instrument. My older sister got the violin, I got the piano, my younger brother came along six years later and he got piano also, and my younger sister got the violin. And we had such fun. All six of us in our family have perfect pitch, so we had a lot of fun with that. And when my sister was in first grade, she joined the grammar school orchestra. And I used to take my coloring book and crayons along, and my, with, of course, my mother took us, and I listened to the orchestra play. And it wasn't long before I begged my mother to give me an instrument where I could play too. So she gave me the violin. Well, after a few weeks of that, I grabbed my sister's violin one day, and I ran through the house with it, and I <laughs> fell on it. And my mother said, that's enough of this. I'm going to give you an instrument that you can't run with. So cello it was, and I was so glad. Well, she made history with that one. <laughs> well, you turned professional at the age of 12. Yes, I did. I was playing in a lot of state, um, it was district and state contest. Um, from the, basically from the grammar school orchestra. The whole town loved music and we played everywhere. And something I forgot to tell you about that is we traveled all over and to St. Louis even. And the conductor got out at the concert and he wanted the youngest member of the orchestra to stand up. And that of course was supposed to be me. But my sister had to stand up and say I'd gotten chicken pox the day before, <laughs> so I didn't get to go at all. <laughs> but we, we played in these district and state contests, and uh, we auditioned on our instruments. So I had piano and cello, and we had a string trio that we competed on, plus the grammar school orchestras from all over the state. And I eventually won 32 medals. Well, when I was in sixth grade, the music supervisor called my mother and she suggested that I not compete anymore because they <laughs> want to give someone else a chance. So I just decided, well, I'll be professional. And a few months later, our string trio got a job of playing three hours for a beautiful art exhibit. And we each made $12. So I thought that was wonderful. <laughs> the beginning of a professional career. <laughs> Is it true you never graduated from high school? That's true. Um, I was awfully busy. I was awfully busy teaching. I was teaching the kids in our neighborhood, and pretty soon their mothers wanted to take two. Well, finally, I couldn't keep all of that up. So I just played my concerts. And I kept getting out of high school all the time because some of them were in the afternoon. But one day, I happened to be looking at a college entrance exams 
for my older sister. And one of them had said, little paragraph there said, entrance uh, requirements for non-high school graduates. And I had those requirements, so I just decided I'd go to college. And so I took the entrance exams for Northwestern University, and they accepted me. And so instead of being a senior that following year, I was a freshman in college. Oh my gosh. Now, how did you ever get to the Lawrence Welk Show? Well, that was rather exciting. <laughs> um, I, I, I was auditioning for the show, and I walked into the theater, and uh, this very good-looking man with a bright red sweater on and casual clothes came over, and he just started teasing me. And I thought, oh my, what is this going to be? So I finally uh, realized he had an accent, and I was very calm about everything, and he introduced himself then, and he was Lawrence Welk. And you didn't recognize him? No, I'd never seen the show. <laughs> so I didn't know what Lawrence Welk looked like. But anyway, that's what happened, and he asked me, I played a few of my lighter cello numbers, and then he uh, asked me, can I play this popular tune? Well, I never remembered the name of any popular tune, but if I heard it, I could play it. So I said, well, how does it go? And he hummed a few bars there, and I played the piece. <laughs> and we went through this two or three times, and then he said, I'd like you to play on my show Saturday, and I'd like you to play a piece called Lullaby that I wrote. And so I did that Saturday night, and the following Saturday night I played again, and the third Saturday, they had someone else they had promised to try. And after the show that night, they called me up and gave me the job. And oh, I was thrilled. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, you've always taught. And yes. And now, you and your husband, Ed, have the Devaney Music School. That's right. How is that? Are you enjoying it? Oh, I love to teach. I've taught ever since I was a child, and he loves to teach, too. But he was a concert, violin, uh, concert pianist, excuse me. And... Uh, we decided that we just didn't want to travel anymore. So we formed our school. I already had had quite a few students. And uh, we have students of all ages. I love to take the young students, and he takes the older students. So we have, uh, well, on our business card, it says beginner to concert stage. Oh. And that's exactly what it is. Some of our students have played with symphonies over in Europe. And we have one getting her master's degree at uh, Northwestern University now. Your alma mater. Oh, yes. What's the best lesson you ever learned from Lawrence Welk? Well, Lawrence and I had a lot of time to talk. Soon as I got on the band, I discovered that in uh, River Forest, Illinois, we lived exactly two blocks away from each other. And when I moved out to Brentwood, California, my goodness, if we weren't two blocks away from <laughs> each other. So occasionally, we would ride to work together. And Lawrence had uh, some wonderful ways of living life, very different, very uh, different from most people, but very much like my parents. And one thing he always told me, I never forgot, if you don't get better, you get worse. And I, I think it's a wonderful way to live by. That is great words to live by. I think so. Oh, Charlotte, I'm so glad you've been here to visit with us. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. I loved it, too. <laughs> and thank you so much. We love coming and visiting with you. And as Lawrence Welk always said, keep a song in your heart.